Hi, this is Kevin Metzger, and welcome to a recording that I was going to do as a, I was trying to do as my daily five for five. But what I realized is I'm going to have some recordings going forward that are probably a little longer where I do some experiments, and then I'll try and summarize some of that in the five for five. Uh, but I'm going to record the experiment as well, so that if you're interested in diving a little deeper and seeing what's happening in the experiment um, and, and learning a little from, from that, then you'll have the opportunity to, to check out these videos. So thanks for watching. I appreciate your time and enjoy the uh, travel agent experiment. Today is Monday, June 5th, and in today's episode, we're looking at the difference is in the response between BARD, GPT 3.5, GTP 4, GTP 4 with browsing, and GTP 4 with a plugin. And we're acting, we're asking uh, the AI to act as an expert travel agent. I thought of this experiment while I was talking to a friend this weekend who was having a hard time finding a hotel in the area she wanted in Seattle. So here's a prompt that we're going to be using to start, and we actually do refine it and develop it further. Um, based off of some of the interactions with the uh, with the AIs, so we're going to ask that the AI act as an expert travel agent and help build a table. Uh, I'm sorry, help build a trip to the Upper Northwest, Seattle and Oregon, U.S. From July 10th through the 17th, I need to book accommodations and transportation, and I'd like recommendations, things to do recommended things to do and restaurants. I'd like the budget for the recommendations and I'd like it all listed in a markdown table. Please provide uh, pictures where you're able. And so let's go over to the um, browsers and take a look. We're going to start with BARD. And basically, so you can see, we put this in and BARD actually uh, gave a really a pretty quick response. Um, I like the way it broke it out. It gave pictures, gave an itinerary by day, uh, along with suggestions, arrive in Seattle, check to get into your hotel in the afternoon, take a walk, walk around Pike's Place Market and do some shopping, and in the evening, catch a dinner cruise and enjoy the view of the city skyline. And then it gives you both pictures of Pike's Place Market and the Waterways Cruise. By the way, if you click on the Waterways Cruise, it'll pop it up and you can uh, actually book right there. So very, very neat, very cool, kind of set it up going through the next few days, um, gives you recommendations through var various things. So Bard does have access to the internet, was able to go uh, search the internet, pull pictures from the internet, and um, and links so that you could go in and book, book your itinerary. Now, where Bard does start to fall and fell fall down and fail is it's not going in and reading all of the details uh, that it pulled from the search and getting the actual cost. So, uh, you know, it gave me a, a budget for $1,200. I don't know if that's supposed to be per day. Um, it may, maybe if it's supposed to be per day, it might be reasonable um, <laughs> based off of what I'm, what, what I see in this itinerary. itinerary. So then that's barred. Let's go to chat GPT. 3.5. So this is the model default is GPT 3.5. Same question. Here, um, GPT 3.5 does not have access to the internet. So you have to understand that anything that's a budget is based off of, it could be hallucinations. Um, it could be old, old data that maybe it did have access to. <clears throat> I think more than likely it's hallucinate, hallucinations, um, and and it, it tells you in the answer. Please note that the prices mentioned are approximate and subject to change, but again, comes up with actually a similar itinerary for a couple of things: your Space Needle, Pioneer. No access to the internet. No, you can't click out to anything. Um, but 
it's nice in how it lays out everything into the table the way I requested, um, making transportation suggestions, uh, whether it be train, car rental, public transit, and flights, um, and does give you know does give some additional recommendations in here uh, that are somewhat different than what we saw in Mars. So that it's now we're going more towards uh, GPT-4. And um, GPT-4 asks, and it comes back with the answer directly. Um, and I, I'm going to say, show you something here quickly. I tried to run all of these in parallel. And GPT, when I was running a uh, request in one window, couldn't answer the question in another window. You can only ask one thing at a time um, through the web interface, so even if you're using different windows to do it. So here, this this is, again, pretty nice in that looks at uh, the data, does not have real-time access, but it has seems to have a better understanding of pricing and how, it's, how to lay out costs associated with various things, um, probably using old data here, um, but does do a decent job of pulling through uh, a, a lot of information, making some recommendations, um, and going. However, it's it's not real time. We don't know, you know, all of the uh, you know all the suggestions are are real or make sense. Now we get into GPT with web browsing, and. The first thing that's very interesting is when you ask GPT with web, web browsing, it actually comes back and says, hey, I need more information. I need the budget for your trip. I need to know if you're traveling with others. What kind of cuisine do you prefer? Um, where are you traveling from and preferred method of transportation? Um, what kind of accommodations to prefer? And uh, do you have any specific area landmarks in Seattle or Oregon you want to visit? So I went back and kind of responded and some of the stuff I'm like, all right, what's popular in Seattle or Oregon? Here's, let's say 5,000. I want seafood, American, and you know, dim sum of the types of cuisine we like. Um, and I said, we already have flights booked, but we can get a car starting in Seattle, Washington, and we're gonna drive to Oregon. So. It went in and did a search, and I do want to show, it shows you where it searched, what it, uh, you know, it looked at a kayak, and this was on its own, it went to kayak, and it went to Mikasa, and Travel Ming, and basically went and read content through all of these things um, to find to find the details to, to give, give the response. So, you need a rental car in Seattle, prices vary, but it, See how it costs, blah, blah, blah. Then it also gives you a link out to Kayak where it got this detail. And let's just go ahead and click on that quickly. Um, and you can see it's saying Seattle. It does not populate everything the way. I was wondering whether it would populate everything for me. Um, so it doesn't. You'd have to go in and do the search again and do it. It would have been cool if it had. Um, and then give some other vacation options uh, or rentals in Seattle. Basically, looked at various things. I imagine that's from the VA Casa. Um, and these are accommodations, right? So, okay. Kind of saying it, same thing. Then a list of activities. I asked it to rework it into a table. It did a decent job. Um, and does give some, oh, it's nice, it gave a bunch of notes on this about the details that it found um, in the, when you ask it to put it in the table. Um, and does come back and says, I'm still finding more information on top. So this was with the web, and I think this was pretty good. And actually, I'm not entirely sure whether this might have been the best response, allowing it to generate the details with the web directly. I. Um, next, I asked it to use plugins. Now, with plugins, I was trying to get it to use Kayak and um, Kayak and what is this? Uh, sorry, 
Expedia at the same time, but I cannot, they are not compatible, uh, interestingly, in the plugins. So um, when it was using Kayak, I was also using a this local, um, local by good call. Uh, what I think happened here is I, I get to a point, this is actually a regenerated one, but I got to a point where it's giving me details and I think it runs out of space um, and doesn't give me any of the additional details. So I had to regenerate the response. Um, let's see, was that in here? Yeah. So it was nice in how it was actually laying this out initially, and it gives you the links to book everything. Let's see if we book, go to book now through Kayak. I'm not a robot. Continue. It actually gives you the neat thing about using the the thing is I think it does does pre-populate. Yeah. So price trends from the. Uh, I think it it did some of the pre, some pre uh, pre population. Um, now, for whatever reason, it's looking at, there we go. So you just have to switch it to the car, but it's already set. And um, really, so the filters are there. So probably with accommodations, it's the same if you click on. So that's kind of neat about using the tool. There are the plugins. The plugins will give you direct access to booking directly. Um, But, but here, if you look, when it comes back down to Seattle, it kind of had some recommendations for activities, but just stopped producing. And I actually think that's because if you look at how much data was produced here, um, you'll see it's actually quite significant. And I suspect it just ran out of ability to um, continue generating the response. I tried to use a please continue command um, and it, it could not continue. So finally, I also used uh, with the Expedia, um, again, similar responses, but um, if you click on the hotels, it'll pull up. Uh, I'll, let it, uh, I'll let it populate, but um, <clears throat> you can see it gives you information doesn't quite lay it out in the table format that we had before. I asked for some expanded details. Um, one of the things I did do in here is because I didn't want to have it ask me a whole bunch of questions again, I actually modified to put the response to some of these questions in here. So very neat to see the differences in the types of responses you get, to see how you can play with it, to get it to give you the information you want. I think you need to expand on this a little bit more to actually build out a full itinerary, but obviously extremely helpful in being able to give you the itinerary that you might want to, um, to have a plan a trip. So that's today's Five on AI. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, like, subscribe, share, and comment. Please note, all content is produced by Kevin Metzger in collaboration with AI.